नारायण स्वामी महाराज नी जय बापा श्री नी जय सदगुरु श्री नी जय स्वामीनारायण भगवान नी जय तथा अनंत अनादि मुक्तो नी जय A humble prayer in their lotus feet and our Guru Anadi Muktaraj Parampuja Narayan Mama and Leela Masi's lotus feet to augment this assembly with their divinity and grace. and to enhance our knowledge and guide us towards them last couple of weeks we talked about many polytheist and monotheist religions and looked at the hierarchy under the trinity of brahma vishnu and shiv with supporting stories incidents theories and observations we also saw that there are limitations in the levels that we have looked so far we will now transition into next level where there are not very many cross references from other religions to be taken except for hinduism itself the only cross references are the nun god of egyptians who rose from the waters of chaos the greek god of chaos the chinese god who rose from the oceans of creation and those are pretty much the references that we find in other religions so let's move to hinduism but before we do that let's take a step back and look at the broad picture for hindus primarily the existing belief systems are belief only in immanent form of god or nirakarwadi and in sakarwadi there are vaishnavas those who worship lord vishnu his incarnations and goddess lakshmi then there are shaiv who worship lord shiv shakta those who worship goddess shakti and her different forms and then there are those who worship lord ganesh there are hardly any worshippers of lord brahma and a few worshippers of goddess saraswati broadly observing worshippers of lord ganesh do not seem to be in the conversation of our god is greater they readily accept lord shiv and goddess shakti to be a greater power shakta also mostly worship lord shiv as well since the goddess is never without lord shiv there is a thought stream that goddess shakti has more power than lord shiv but that is a minority 
So mostly the Vaishnav and Shaiv seem to be getting into the conversation of our God is greater. Based on Srimad Bhagavat, Brahma emerged from the navel lotus of Lord Vishnu. So Vaishnavas say that Lord Vishnu is greater amongst the Trinity. Shaiv, on the contrary, refer to the Purush and Prakruti mentioned in Srimad Bhagavat and say that Lord Shiv and Goddess Shakti are the Purush and the Prakruti and therefore Lord Shiv is greater. And within the broad classification of Vaishnavas are the worshippers of Lord Vishnu, Lord Ram, Lord Krishna. Some even say that followers of Lord Swaminarayan are also Vaishnavas. And it is this constant conversation and multiple thought streams that confuse many Hindu pundits and scholars leave alone the common devotee and non-Hindus. So let's look at what Lord Swaminarayan, Sri Abjiva Pashri and Anadi Muktaraj Parampuji Narayan Mama have taught us. In verse 47 of Sakshapatri, Lord Swaminarayan has mentioned that since both Lord Vishnu and Lord Shiv are mentioned as Brahm in Ved, so we are talking about the, the brilliant Brahm, not Brahm, the deity Brahma. So since they are both mentioned as Brahm in Ved, consider them to be identified with one another. This verse puts to rest all the debates around who is greater amongst Vaishnavas and Shaivs. The contradiction comes in when we read about Lord Vishnu lying on a huge serpent in an ocean from whose naval lotus Lord Brahma was born. So once Lord Brahma was born, he started walking around and he could not reach the ends of the lotus itself. So he started walking on the stack of the lotus And he walked inside that stock for 100 years of his life, but could not find its end. So he prayed for a longer life, came back, and indulged into the activity of creating the universe and created the 14 lokes inside that lotus and we talked about those 14 lokes in past couple of weeks. So if Trinity bears the same or similar powers and are identified with one another, who is the Lord Vishnu lying on the huge serpent who inspired the creation of 14 worlds? That Lord Vishnu has to be greater than Lord Brahma since Lord Brahma could not find the end of the navel lotus. So the body of that Lord Vishnu must be really, really big. So if Brahma, Vishnu, Shiv, the Trinity, 
are all equal or similar in their powers, then that Lord Vishnu has to be somebody else. One of the things that we find a lot in the scriptures is a higher stratum God manifesting under the guise or disguise of lower stratum God or deity. Most of the time the manifestation happens by way of Lord Vishnu of Trinity. The next two obvious questions are why Lord Vishnu and what is the need for the guise or disguise? When we talked about Trinity, we talked about Vishnu being a Satvic God, Prince of the Three Attributes. Sattva is the most favorable for divinity and spiritual progress. The higher spiritual strata prefer Sattva over Rajas and Tamas for manifestation. So that explains why Lord Vishnu, since he is a Sattvic God and is preferable over Rajasic and Tamasic Gods. Second question is why the guys? In management, the higher levels in management do not generally interfere in skip level management. So skip level management is the upper level skips the level in between and directly interacts with the lower levels in management. For example, a VP does not really interfere in how a manager manages his or her teams on a day-to-day basis. So if the VP wants to send a message across to the team, he or she usually passes on to the manager who in turn passes it on to the team. The reason it is done this way is because a good manager is very close to the team and takes care of the team. The team trusts such a manager. So a message coming from the manager is well received rather than a message message coming from a VP that the team members hardly communicate with. Team members are able to identify more with the manager than with the VP. It is a similar concept, incarnation in guise of a well-worshipped god or deity is much well received to begin with and the real greatness of the incarnation is later revealed, accepted and worshipped. So that explains why the guise. So the Lord Vishnu sleeping on a giant serpent is the governing god of the trinity of Brahma, Vishnu, Shiv. This Lord Vishnu is known as Vairat Purush or Vairaj Purush or Vairat Narayan or Narayan or Mahavishnu. We will stay with the name Vairat Purush to avoid confusion with any references to Vishnu or Mahavishnu or Narayan. It is in the navel lotus of Vairat Purush that Lord Brahma was born 
and created the 14 lokas. This distinction is evident if one learns Sanskrit and reads the actual Srimad Bhagavat carefully with enough thought. For those who cannot learn Sanskrit, the word-to-word -word translation by ISKCON can be very helpful. So one of the things that I like about ISKCON group is they first provide a word-to-word -word translation and then they build sentences from that translation. So the word-to-word -word translation is very helpful because that frees us from the sentence formation and manipulation by somebody else. I already had a link to it in one of the earlier slides from past weeks. I'll include it again, and I'll also include links to Ved and Puran. This is only for those who want to study deeper. For others, this is already described by Sri Abhijiva Pashri in Rahasyarth Vachanamratam. As I mentioned once in the past, one way is to study and confirm for ourselves and other is to trust someone who seems to have our good at heart. The time spent in studying can be better utilized in spiritual progress if we are able to trust the trustworthy ones. In Gadara Madhya Prakran 31st Vachnamrata, there is a lot of information available on Vairat Purush. The body of Vairat Purush and every strata under it is also made up of 24 elements. Like us humans, Vairat Purush has three types of bodies. They are called Virat, Sutratma, and Avyakrit. Just as we have three states of mind, awakened, dreaming, and deep sleep, Virat Purush also has three states, generation, operation, and destruction. Generation state is governed by Rajas Ahankar, operation state by Sattva Ahankar, and destruction state by Tamas Ahankar. The life of Vairat Purush is said to be two parads or 311.04 trillion human years. So trillion is 10 raised to 12. And life of Vairat Purush is 311.04 trillion years. This is the same as the lifespan of Brahma, Vishnu, Shiv. Abhji Vapashri has mentioned in the Rahasyarth of Gadara Madhya 31st Vajnamratam that the end of life of Vairat Purush is end of life of everything under him as well as the 24 elements, Ahankar and Mahatattva, which are the next levels. And that is when the evening of Pradhan Purush falls. So we'll transition into stage 5 in just a little bit. This refers to the stratum in stage 5. It is not clear whether the earlier avatars of Lord Vishnu, Matsya, Kurma, Vara, Rusi, Vaman, and Parshuram were those of the Lord Vishnu of the Trinity or of Vairat Purush. Since Vairat Purush is mentioned in guise of Lord Vishnu, there is some mention 
that Virat Purush created the time-space continuum and Brahma utilized that for creation of the 14 worlds. However, it is not clear what level and what extent does it refer to. There is, however, a clear reference that speech or sound energy, as we know it, was created by Virat Purush. In Sarangpur 6th Vachanamrita, Sriji Maharaj has mentioned with reference to Srimad Bhagavat that Virat Purush became capable of creation only when God inspired him. So initially, God entered the Sahasrar Chakra of Virat Purush, which resulted in a vibrational energy. This energy then traveled down to Manipur Chakra in the navel. The navel lotus of Vairad Purush was facing down and started facing up when the energy traveled up to it. The sound of that energy wave is called Paravani or the Divine Language. Inside the body of Vairat Purush, the energy then travels back up to the heart of Vairat Purush, the Anahat Chakra, and became known as Pashanti. Upon further travel to the throat or Vishuddha Chakra, it came to be known as Madhyama. And when it finally came out from the mouth of Vairat Purush as a speech in form of A, U, and Ma, forming Om, it came to be known as Vaikri and ways were created from this Vaikri type of speech. When the body of Vairat Purush was formed, all the 24 elements, <coughs> their deities, the soul of Vairat Purush made up the body. But Vairat Purush still did not have the energy to create the universe. Then God provided that energy for creation. It was only then that the creation was made possible. Vairat Purush worships three types of Ahankar, Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. During the state of creation, he worships Rajasahankar, also known as Anirudh. During the state of operation, he worships Sattva Ahankar, also known as Pradyumna. During the state of destruction, he worships Tamasahankar, also known as Sankarshan. However, due to worship of three types of Ahankar, Vairat Purush only gets the energy and power to create, maintain and operate. He does not progress spiritually to get liberated. For that, he has to worship the Supreme Lord. So since the body of Vairat Purush is made up of 24 elements. Let's visit the 24 elements from a larger perspective. 
This will now take us into our stage 5 of hierarchy. For those on WebEx, I have changed the slide to show stage 5. A lot of what we see here is also mentioned in Srimad Bhagwat. I have been including a reference picture in last few weeks. Right, and I have included it again this week as well. This picture is, this picture and there are other similar pictures which are derived by groups like ISKCON from Srimad Bhagavad. And when we compare that with the hierarchy explained in Swaminar and philosophy, it matches exactly. This establishes credibility of Swaminar and philosophy as being aligned with the Hindu philosophy. Looking at stage 5, Mahatattva, from at the top, or rather in the middle, Mahatattva is born from unification of Pradhan Purush and Pradhan Prakruti or Pradhan Maya. So, word Prakruti and Maya is used interchangeably. So, Mahatattva is born from Pradhan Purush and Pradhan Prakruti. We have talked earlier in the series that Mahatattva and Chit are undifferentiated and the universe exists in its subtle form in Mahatattva. Based on that, we mapped Mahatattva to be the subtle store for the entire universe, shared by everyone in the universe, using the example of cloud technology. In Gadara Pratham 12th Vachanamritam, Sriji Maharaj has explained Mahatattva as unpolluted, brilliant, clean or immaculate, pure sattva oriented and peaceful. It is using the machinery of Mahatattva that the fructification of the deeds come about and get linked to one another. Say for example, I pick a fight with my sister and she fights back. So both of us form a sanskar that will give us the returns of the fight that both of us picked. And since those are associated with each other, the universal Mahatattva makes sure the events that arise for fructification of those deeds map both of us together. From Mahatattva emerges Ahankar, which is of three types, Rajas, Sattva and Tamas. The generation, operation and destruction states of Vairat Purush and dreaming, awaken and deep sleep states of human beings are associated with Rajas, Sattva and Tamas Ahankar respectively. From Tamas Ahankar, five quintessence and five fundamental elements emerge. The quintessences are the subtle form and cause of associated fundamental element. For example, order is the cause of earth and so on. From Rajas Ahankar, we get ten senses, five prans, and intellect. And from Sattva Ahankar, we get mind and the governing deities of the 24 elements. So we have Mahatattva, Ahankar, 
mind, intellect, ten senses, five quintessence and five basic elements, giving us the twenty-four elements. And as we saw in stage six, these twenty-four elements form the body of Virat Purush and everything under him. As for Vairat Purush, he worships three ahankars and his body is formed with the 24 elements. But as mentioned in Gadada Madhya 31st Vachanamritam, he is born out of unification of Pradhan Purush and Pradhan Prakruti and is their son. Pradhan Purush and Prakruti have met many such Vairat Purush as their sons. Given that the 24 elements are common across creation under Pradhan Purush and Pradhan Prakruti, it can be safely said that everything under Vairat Purush, including Vairat Purush, will have a similar body with ten senses, five elements, five quintessence, and four inner organs. And this is true for all Vairat Purush under one Pradhan Purush and Pradhan Prakruti. Now, though he said they would have ten senses, some of the senses could be different. For example, we know that Lord Brahma, Lord Vishnu, they have been depicted as having four hands, Chaturpuj. So, there might be some variations here or there, but at the end of the day, there will be ten senses. Another thing is while these 24 elements form the bodies of the souls, they also have a body of their own and a soul that resides in that body. So the universal earth element has a body and a soul. Also the element earth has its effect which is described as a layer of 4 billion miles in diameter. And the same goes with the remaining of the 24 elements. They have a body and a soul, and they have their own effect. The universal mind that emerges from Sattva Ahankar or Pradyumna is the connecting link for all the minds in the universe. The effect of that universal mind is the minds that reside in all of us and their communication channels. This can be better understood with an example of a cell phone. How is the connection from one cell phone to other established? When a number is dialed, the phone selects the least used frequency in the surrounding area to connect to the nearest cell phone tower. The cell phone tower then transmits that signal to the satellite. The satellite then determines the cell phone tower closest to the dialed number and this cell phone tower in turn rings the dialed number and a connection is established. So all individual cell phones are able to connect with each other through cell phone towers and a satellite. Universal mind acts like that telecommunication satellite 
and it is through the universal mind that our minds can connect with one another. We use the term telepathy to explain it. It requires an internally built energy for communication, just like the cell phones utilize electromagnetic energy, microwave and radio waves to communicate. This internal energy is generated through control of senses and, of course, control of mind itself. Even if one of the two people who want to communicate telepathically has developed this internal energy, the communication channel can be established. The speed of mind is very fast. Our mind is already on moon the moment we think about moon. So when we communicate telepathically, there is usually no latency. Unless, of course, there is latency in establishing the connection itself. But once the connection is established, there is no latency. So that was a little bit about the universal mind and how it makes telepathy possible. The universal intellect that emerges from Raja Sahankar is many a times connected with Lord Buddha. Since it is called Buddhi. Buddhi, however, in no way or form says anything about spiritual achievements of Lord Buddha. Lord Buddha was able to go beyond the veil of Maya and is therefore beyond the intellect that is one of the 24 elements. In fact, Anadi Mukhtar Parampujanar Mama used to mention in his lectures that after achieve Nirvan, Lord Buddha went ahead to achieve Maha Nirvan and then said that don't stop there, there is something beyond Maha Nirvan as well. So he must have been able to tune into the immanent form of Mood Purush, which is the first level beyond Mood Maya and maybe even the immanent form of the next level of either Mahakad or Narnarayan or Vasudev Brahm, it's hard to say. So Pradhan Purush, which is the next level from Mahatattva, up above there is Pradhan Purush and Pradhan Prakruti. So Pradhan Purush is also called Bhuma Purush, Vishnu, Mahavishnu, Narayan and manifested on this earth as Lord Ram by way of Lord Vishnu. To avoid confusion, we will use the term Pradhan Purush for the spiritual stratum and Lord Ram for his earthly manifestation. It is unclear whether Goddess Sita was a devotee of Pradhan Purush or a Pradhan Prakruti herself. The prevalent belief is that she was a devotee. Lakshman ji and Hanuman ji were definitely Lord Ram's devotees. He was the first complete human incarnation or manifestation of a God and taught the humanity how to abide by basic virtues and ethics. Lord Ram is said to have advented in the very beginning of Trita Yuga. We'll talk about Yuga in next, next week. 
The estimated lifespan in Treta Yug is 10,000 years. His exile lasted 14 years of a total lifespan of 10,000 years. So while the time of exile sounds short in the bigger scheme of things, it was still 14 years. During his 14 years of exile, Lord Ram built a bridge to Lanka where Ravan kept goddess Sita captive. The satellite imaging technology has revealed that there indeed used to be a landmass connecting Rameshwaram in southern India and Manar in Sri Lanka. When the bridge was built, Lord Ram sat on the beaches of the ocean and prayed to God of sea, Samudra Dev, to help him out. Samudra Dev did not show up for two, three days. So Lord Ram got angry. <coughs> Excuse me. So Lord Ram got angry and was ready to dry the sea out. And the Samudra Dev got scared and appeared. When he appeared, he told Lord Ram that due to too much salt and impurities in the sea, Lord Ram's message was not reaching him. So maybe Lord Ram was using the communication wave channel of universal mind to communicate with the Samudra Dev. So that might tell us that the power of telepathy is dependent on setting up a clean and clear channel of communication. Or if we want to look at it from the scientific perspective, then maybe Lord Ram had a communication device to communicate with people living inside of the seas or oceans. So after Samudra Dev and Lord Ram talked, Lord Ram knew where to build the bridge. The army of apes started building the bridge by writing the word Ram on the stone and throwing the stones in the water. The stones would float on their own when the word Ram was written on them. There are two speculative theories around this. First is that there was a pumice ro rock lying there from past volcano and pumice would naturally float in the waters due to its porous nature. The other theory is that they managed sound levitation with the use of word Ram. There is an experiment done by physicists in Japan <coughs> that with the right amount of ultrasound waves, which are not audible to human ears, objects can be made to levitate in the air. I've included a link to this in my slides. So was the army of apes actually a very intelligent army who were able to master sound levitation <clears throat> with the help of Lord Ram and set one up on the beaches at Rameshwaram. Something to think about. It is believed that the shallow sea between Rameshwaram and Manar, some places as shallow as only three feet, is the remnant of the bridge built by Lord Ram. So having looked at Lord Ram and his life a little bit, let's look at the stratum of Pradhan Purush and Pradhan Prakruti. It is still under Murmaya, 
and therefore has the distinction of body and soul. However, it is beyond 24 elements. So the matter that forms their bodies must be different, different than the 24 elements. We do not know what it would be or what it is. But based on what we know that 24 elements are created from Pradhan Purush and Pradhan Prakruti, we can guess that it would be different. The divine abode of Pradhan Purush is called Venkut. It is also mentioned that he has another abode in the physical layer of earth. So we said there is a physical layer of earth that is 4 billion miles in diameter. So somewhere in that layer also Pradhan Purush and Pradhan Prakruti have a board. Maybe it's their vacation home. Um, for the lifespan of Pradhan Purush and Pradhan Prakruti, the end of life of Vairat Purush which is 311.04 trillion years, it is half a day for Pradhan Purush and Pradhan Prakruti. So there is day and night, so 311 trillion years makes the day, so there is a night which is equally long, and that's why it's half a day. So one day is 622.08 into 10 raised to 12 or 622.08 trillion years and that, make, that makes one day for Pradhan Purush. Such 360 days form one year and they live such 100 years. So 622.08 times 10 raised to 12 times 36,000 is 22.39488 times 10 raised to 18 or to approximate it's 22.4 quintillion years. Now imagine being stuck in a body of Pradhan Purush for so many years. Yes, the powers will be immense, but doing the same thing over and over again every single day for quintillions of years not only is the lifespan longer as we go higher up in the hierarchy but so are the powers and pleasures so yes more powers and more pleasures but it also means that the attachment is higher higher the attachment more difficult it is to overcome the bindings of those attachments and resulting vices. More the bindings, more difficult it is to progress to the next level. Anadi Muktaraj Parampuja Narayan Mama used to say that deities have much stronger feelings of jealousy, etc. And they get very jealous when a soul starts progressing on the spiritual path. They do all they can to hinder and block the progress. The stories of deities trying to block the worshippers of Trinity is well written over many places in scriptures. There are similar stories in Roman mythology as well. However, it is not limited to the deities. The Trinity blocks from Vairat Purush. Vairat Purush blocks from 24 elements. Vairat Purush and 24 elements together block from Pradhan Purush and so on. Each subsequent layer tries to block the spiritual progress of the soul to maintain its control over the soul.
which means the level of freedom might increase in terms of powers, resources, and ability to execute according to one's will. But the freedom from this entire cycle of creation, the freedom to just be in the bliss all the time and have only that as an activity diminishes as we go up till we surpass Maya or mood Maya. It becomes slower and harder. So aren't we lucky to be humans? stuck in a body for only 100 years or less? Aren't we lucky to have met Anadimukta like Anadimukta Raj Parampuja Narayan Mama and Anadimukta Raj Parampuja Leela Masi? That we do not have to worry about hindrances caused by any strata? Aren't we lucky to have become eligible for the divine bliss of the Murti of Lord Swami Narayan in a short lifespan of less than 100 years. Let's pause here today and reminisce and bask in the warmth of this knowledge and happiness and reflect on how fortunate, loved and cared we are. This week we looked at remainder of stage 6 and 5 as is mentioned in the Hindu scriptures. Next week we will map signs to these states and talk about some scientific discoveries and theories. During that we'll talk about quantum physics, bosons, fermions, forces of nature, etc. The week after that, we will look at the dimensions mentioned in Hinduism, convert them to present-day measurement system, and try to map to the universe and the world as we know it today. For a reference, I have included a link to those measurements from Wikipedia for those who are interested. So thank you to the Satsang Sabha for patiently listening and please be kind to overlook any shortcomings. May Lord Swami Narayan and his Anadi Mukta bless us all. Jai Swami Narayan. Uh, Vishal Bhai, over to you. Jai Swami Narayan. <coughs>